Alright guys, it is a cool, blustery spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in uh, the heart of Texas uh, here on this blustery Tuesday, March 31st, 2020. Do you believe we are one-fourth of the way through the crazy year 2020 and this is Sam Mitchell and this is my clean little co-pilot Sancho Panza doing what we do every day and well every day the uh, past couple of weeks and this is bringing you our coronavirus chronicle uh, of the day to day and I do appreciate you guys flooding with me with coronavirus articles I still need need to make a point I, I don't know why I'm having such a difficult time making this point I really appreciate you guys sending me the uh, so many articles but this is not the how many people are going to die from coronavirus channel okay one more time i am not interested in reading anything about how many human beings are going to die from this virus this is not what this channel is about this channel is about what the corona panic is doing to the economy and quite possibly uh, to global industrial civilization. So, uh, depending on your viewpoint, I guess this is good or bad news. Certainly, if you are a driver uh, of a gas-sucking vehicle, this is very good news. So, uh, now this isn't only, this, this is the latest article about gas prices right here in today's mainstream media uh, this this isn't only about coronavirus this uh, this whole oil price war you know just happens to coincide coincidentally enough with the coronavirus panic uh, going around the planet, you know, where OPEC and Russia and all those guys just decided to knock off, uh, you know, putting any curbs on drilling. So you had that, you had that oil price war uh, starting up anyway. At the same time, the, uh, the knockout punch to uh, demand for oil and gas. Uh, little dog, I need to put you down. I'm sorry. Uh, crank it up. And, and, and I still, guys, I, I'm reading this headline, this jaw-dropping headline. Here in Texas, uh, gas, I saw gas at $1.54 a gallon. Gas is a buck fifty-four a gallon in, uh, in Austin, Texas today. This article from NBC News, and it's repeated in the, in the body of the story, I, I still have a hard time believing that this is not a typo. Anyway, U.S. set to lose title as top oil producer as demand plunges and gas drops below $1 per gallon. Gas drops below one dollar per gallon. I always thought that Texas had the cheapest gas prices. <coughs> so anyway, the oil market is in free fall. Do you think so? The oil market is in free fall with one benchmark price hovering around twenty dollars per barrel today. And the national average price, okay, the national average price of gas now dipping below $2 a gallon, a 16-year low. Daniel Jurgen, vice chairman of IHS Market, told CNBC on Monday that April 
which starts tomorrow, could see an unprecedented drop in global demand of 20 million barrels per day. Quote, the understatement of the year, we are going to see a major decline in U.S. production, close quote. Oh, yes. This will do significant and probably lasting damage to the American oil industry, which has grown in recent years due to an increase in shale extraction, making the U.S. the world's top oil producer. Uh, this is Andrew Lipow, president of Lipow Oil Associates. <clears throat> Quote, Crude oil prices under $30 per barrel are not enough to sustain shale production in North Dakota and Texas. We are going to see an increase in consolidation and bankruptcies in the oil patch. We have, uh, we have some good news here in the uh, in the doomosphere today, uh, <clears throat> the shale expansion has been largely financed by high yield debt from private equity lenders that do not have the patience for sustained losses. Quoting Lipal, quote: They are not willing to invest additional funds in an industry that is under such significant pressure. Combined with cutbacks in production capital expenditures by big multinational oil companies, which I've, uh, which I've reported on here before, is how you know, the big players are cutting way back. Uh, we've already discussed that earlier. So combined with cutbacks in production capital expenditures by the big multinational oil companies, the drop in U.S. oil output now roughly 13, well, roughly 13 million barrels per day at the beginning of this year will likely knock it off its perch atop the list of oil producing countries, which I guess will go back to either Russia or Saudi Arabia after the shale, the shale uh, wells, the frackers pack up and go home. Uh, we can give it back to Russia and Saudi Arabia to uh, duke it out, I guess. Anyway. Continuing to quote this uh, oil analyst Lipal, quote, Shale production is expected to decline by over a million barrels per day over the next 12 months, and it would not surprise me if the declines are ultimately more. I am making the prediction that there are going to be a lot more than one million. So there all of this talk. And they're talking about going from 13 million to 12 million. It doesn't make sense to me, guys. I am not an oil analyst. I am just the chronicler of the collapse of civilization. Back to Lipow. Unlike Saudi Arabia, where the production level is dictated by the government, the U.S. is likely to see a more dramatic decline in its production given the free market economics. Uh, I estimate that gasoline demand in the U.S. is now off 35% and jet fuel demand is off at least 50%. Uh, so, you know, as the coronavirus pandemic panic has increased in severity in the U.S. and, uh, and is increasing every day, demand for fuel has dropped precipitously. 
Uh, it certainly has in my gas sucking truck. Uh, you, you know, I, I just uh, I just gassed up at a buck fifty six a couple of days ago, and I said, okay, I'm all gassed up, and I have nowhere to go. Uh, I'm driving a lot less for the simple reason that there is nowhere to drive to, which is the only reason I am isolating myself, is because I have nowhere to go. Uh, and, no, and neither does anybody else. Uh, continuing with this Lipal character, quote, uh, no, we're going to, I've already mentioned that. Okay. This, you know, the, the, this collapsing price of gasoline would ordinarily be good news for drivers. But with our country under public health warnings to avoid unnecessary travel and work from home if possible, this is a silver lining that few will be able to appreciate. According to Gas Buddy, the average nationwide price of a gallon of regular gas fell to $1.99 on Friday and could fall as low as $1.49 by mid-April. Gas Buddy flagged five states where prices have now dipped below $1 a gallon. Okay, they said it in the headline. They're mentioning it again. So, Kentucky, Missouri, Oklahoma, Tennessee, and Wisconsin. Uh, I'm surprised to see Wisconsin on that list. So, five states already uh, tracking gasoline less than $1 per gallon at the pump. This is uh, Patrick DeHaan. Gas Buddy's head of petroleum analysis. Quote, <clears throat> I think that ultimately we may see several hundred or so stations in the country at or below one dollar a gallon based on current fundamentals, primarily in the Great Lakes or in low tax states in the South. So my guess is Texas will also be joining the $1 a gallon club. Uh, the sharp, swift plunge in prices prompted President Donald Trump to say uh, on Monday that he would call Russian leader Vladimir Putin to discuss the plummeting oil prices. I bet he will. But analysts say that even if Russia and OPEC members, including de facto leader Saudi Arabia, were to agree at their next meeting of the cartel scheduled for June to reinstate production cuts, the damage has already been done. This was a statement from Goldman Sachs yesterday, quote, the oil price war is made irrelevant by the large decline in demand and has made a coordinated supply response impossible to achieve in time. Wrapping up with oil analyst Lat Lipow, <clears throat> quote, over time, oil prices will begin their long road to recovery and that is going to take six to nine months given the significant oversupply we are seeing right now i don't believe we're going to get back to sixty dollar oil for some time it could be several years close quote uh, and then, of course, coming in uh, just hot off the presses from Market Watch, we have this article hot off the presses. Uh, you heard it here first. Crude oil prices rebound after tapping 18-year lows after tapping 18-year lows. Uh, 
<clears throat> so according to Market Watch, uh, if I can get my computer to call this up, uh, oil prices are edging higher today, finding some support after China reported strong manufacturing data. Yeah, and President Donald Trump spoke with Russia about efforts to fight the spread of the coronavirus pandemic and stabilize the crude market. Uh, so we shall see. Uh, Still, demand for oil had better improve because global storage could be full by May if things don't change. So there you go. Uh, the oil investors in absolute meltdown panic like everybody else. Uh, so get out there and enjoy your one dollar a gallon gas while you are still allowed to even get in your gas sucking car and leave your house before the uh, the real lockdowns of our freedom of movement uh, start showing up around here. Anyway, this wraps up today's Coronavirus Chronicle. If you enjoyed that, please uh, spend a few seconds to thumb this video up. And uh, please subscribe when you're over here. But I'm going to wrap this up and we're going to head over to Collapse Chronicles and look at the number one story on the uh, mainstream media today which may or may not have anything to do with coronavirus, but I certainly think it has something to do with the chronicle of the collapse. So we're going to make it uh, today's chronicle of the collapse in another video coming up in a minute. Bye, guys.